up everyone, it's Kelly from A Side of Sweet and I am back today with another photography tutorial. In this video, I'm going to share with you seven techniques to harness the power of Photoshop and Camera Raw to get the right white balance every time. An incorrect white balance can completely ruin an otherwise amazing photo. If it's too warm or too cool or there are like weird greens in it, it's going to ruin the photo. I mean, there's just no way around it. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what, you know, what the true white balance is. I've been using Photoshop for almost 10 years and in that time I've developed a handful of tips and tricks that help me get the white, the right, <laughs> help me get the white white balance. Help, help me get the right white balance. Say that 10 times fast. Help me, help me get the right white balance every time. Yeah! I have seven techniques that you can try in order to master white balance. Before we jump into the video, if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out my other photography tutorials. And if you want to see what I'm up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Aside of Sweet. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Let's start by opening your photo in Photoshop. If you are working with a RAW file, it'll open in Camera Raw first, which is perfect because there are a ton of really great options for adjusting white balance in the Camera Raw Navigator. If for some reason you're not working with a RAW file, let's just open this photo in Photoshop. You can actually find the Camera Raw Navigator within Photoshop. You just need to go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. It'll open the same dialog, but just in a different way. So this is an old image of blueberry pie. I thought this would be a great example because the white balance on this is really cool. These plates were white, um, and as you can see, they do not look white here. My first step is always using the auto function when I start editing a photo in Camera Raw, but as you can see, that doesn't adjust the white balance. It just sort of brightens the photo or you know makes minor corrections. To actually auto adjust the white balance in Camera Raw, it's under white balance, go figure. So auto. So as you can see, this made the photo much, much better just right out the gate. It's much less cool, still not perfect, but I think it's a really good start. And if for some reason I don't like how the auto balance was set by Camera Raw, then I'll just go in here and sort of tweak the parameters until it looks kind of better. As you can see here, you can kind of dial up the warmth. And then there's the tint, which I tend to not play with a lot. The purple green kind of balance, I just, you know, even a couple notches tends to really change the photo really dramatically. Another trick in Camera Raw is to go to the HSL tab and try to desaturate areas that you know the white balance is off on. So for example, this gray backdrop, which is really neutral in real life, um, it doesn't have a bluish tint to it at all. You could just take the blue slider and desaturate it a little bit. And as you can see, let's slide back and forth on that. There's before and there's after. We can even probably do a little more. So there's zero and then here's 60. So I can toggle back and forth between those changes. This is most obvious in the napkin and in the shadows. If you look sort of at the, at the darker shades of blue, it's kind of a light gray color. It's not really bluish at all. So there's before there's after. Obviously this only works if the color that you're trying to correct is not part of the main image of the photo. Okay, let's jump into our third option. For more fine tuning, I will often use the adjustment brush. The default view of Camera Raw is this magnifying glass or zoom tool. If you track right along here in the, in the toolbar and find adjustment brush, this brush just allows you to kind of paint on changes to one particular area. Let's say you want to adjust the exposure. You only want to do it on the side that was away from your natural light source. Just dial up the exposure. And then as you can see, you can sort of paint on those changes like that. You can adjust the brush size, obviously. And this allows you to only make exposure or saturation or contrast or highlight changes to one part of the photo. For us though, because we're thinking about white balance, it's really helpful in two ways. One is the temperature. Here, let's zoom in here. If you can see here, the shadow really has a bluish cast to it. Even though we've desaturated the blue quite a bit with that other step, I'm gonna just change the brush so that it's a little bit warmer make it a little smaller so it's the size of this and then I'm going to just brush on here to sort of counteract that shadow. In the case of this blueberry pie, I actually don't think that that's the best 
option for the white balance. I think because it's really so narrowly combined to just this shadow, when the brush kind of overlaps anything else, you can see it turn the plate a little bit yellow. So I'm gonna actually delete this pin. So you just click the pin and delete it, and that'll revert it to how it used to be. And try another approach. And that is desaturation. So I'm gonna decrease the saturation of the brush. And my hope is that I'm gonna just edge over the shadow and it's gonna desaturate it and that'll sort of fix everything. So let's see how this looks. So then you can just play with the strength of that up and down. If you adjust the saturation and then you may need to adjust a different part like the blacks or exposure just to counteract because it's gonna get a little bit darker. So let's see the before and after on that. It's pretty dramatic, isn't it? How much better it looks. If you feel like your brush was too overreaching, if you can see here, when you highlight the area of the pin, it sort of overlaps the um, pie itself. Then you just click the pin, change the adjustment brush to erase, and then you can erase where that pin is adjusting. So now as you can see, it's really not affecting the pie anymore. It's really located to just on the plate itself. Let's look at that one more time in action here. We still have the same settings that we used on that plate, and then there you go. Look at that. Much better, much whiter. Just take the erase again and rescue that pie filling, because we definitely don't want that to be desaturated. So that's actually already looking pretty good, I have to say. If I had opened this right away, right out of the camera, I would have been really, really happy with this white balance. Usually adjust the brightness of my images a little bit, and then I will open it in Photoshop. I have a preset that I've made myself that brightens the image. And I think overall, this looks pretty dang good. It needs to be cropped, obviously. You can see the end of my backdrop there. And if you're interested in what I use for photography backdrops, I will leave a link to the site where I get most of them from in the description box. So let's look at it, what it looked like before I edited it. We'll just hit the auto tab so it looks about the same except for the white balance changes that we made. Open the image, and now it's open in Photoshop. Here we go. So before and after. The nice thing about the camera raw filter option in Photoshop is that even if you decide you still want to make a few more changes in camera raw, you can still get that filter back up by going to filter and hitting camera raw filter. It'll open the dialog box again, and then you can make more um, brush adjustments, which are my favorite, and then also global adjustments. We'll target this little part here because it's a little bit shadowed and dark. We'll adjust the exposure a little bit and then also desaturate it slightly, make it a little warmer. So I'm going to have my brush here. Just brush that on, and as you can see, there's before and there's after. So you hit OK, I just lighten that up a little bit. And that's it. Now let's adjust white balance directly within Photoshop for our next image. So this is a salmon salad that I photographed a couple of years ago. One of the first white balance steps that I take in Photoshop is the same that I do in Camera Raw, which is just to hit the Auto Color option under Image. In general, the camera raw auto white balance is much better than what's available in Photoshop. So as you can see here, this is not a better edit for my photo. It's very rare that this kind of right out of the box auto balance makes any adjustment to my photo that I wanna keep. But one great way to make this a little bit more effective is actually by fading the adjustment that you just applied. So I do this all the time in Photoshop. So under edit, hit fade, and it will help you fade the last step that you applied. As you can see, here is the photo without the, the white balance adjustment. And then I can just adjust the opacity and apply you know, part of it instead of doing the whole thing. And it's possible that along this spectrum, you'll actually find a sweet spot where the adjustment that you made is partially applied, but not full strength, and it'll look better. So that's number one, using the auto feature and then just fading the opacity of the adjustment. The next one that I really like to use is under the image tab. There's an adjustment called levels. When you're adjusting the levels, this is adjusting the brightness of the mid-tones and the highlights and the, the shadows or the lowlights of the image. And that I don't use as much because I think the curves function kind of adjusts all of these things in a more flexible way. But what I do use is this white balance dropper tool that's sort of hidden within the levels. As you can see, when I hover over this dropper here, it says sample in image to set white point. So 
I'm gonna click that. And then all you have to do is use this dropper tool to find a spot on your photo that should be white. And as you can see on this photo, there's a ton of places where it should be white. I usually try to pick one that's pretty bright because if you pick in the shadows, it's gonna totally overexpose your whole image. Let's see right here. And as you can see, it's still totally overexposed, but if I do it in the shadows, it's even worse. You really wanna pick the brightest part of your image so maybe it might even be up here. Just sort of get that, that good white balance. Hit okay, and right now you're probably thinking I'm crazy, that this looks totally ridiculous. But we're gonna go back up to the edit tab again and use that fade function and fade the impact that we just applied with that levels adjustment. All right, so here's no adjustment. And then once again, you're gonna kind of find that sweet spot I think maybe right there, where it looks better, but it's not so crazy like it was. As you can see, it's still not perfect. The image looks pretty blue still, despite the adjustments that we've made. Other things that we can try. For the rest of these adjustments, I like to apply them as layers to my image so that when I make a change, I have the option to go back and change my mind or fade the opacity of the layer to decrease the impact that it had. The obvious one is the layer that affects the color balance. Here you have three options, cyan to red, magenta to green, and yellow to blue. I have to say, it took me a long time to get comfortable with using this as an adjustment. I think it's a lot of practice and a lot of trial and error before you can really see a photo and assess where on the slider it needs to change. I encourage you to practice this and just, you know, mess around with it until you can develop a style that you like. I tend to just pick the slider and kind of toggle things back and forth and kind of see what looks better. I think it's very obvious that this photo doesn't need any more red. So surprisingly, I actually think it needs a little bit more cyan, which you wouldn't expect given how cool the photo is. So let's fix the obvious. I mean, I think this needs to be dragged down quite a bit. So I think about right there maybe. All right, so let's see what that did. Oh yeah, that's a huge improvement. So the salmon was actually looking kind of red, which, you know, now now that I've made that adjustment, I can see but the before versus the after that the salmon looks like it's Kind of more the right color so that's great and another thing that you can do is you can adjust the opacity of the color balance layer to try to see if maybe you overdid it a little bit 75 percent is a good fix instead of the entire 100 percent of the opacity if i'm really stuck though and i just can't figure out what is wrong with my white balance i actually find that the eyedropper tool is super helpful so you find that it's this little eyedropper here on the left hand side you wanna make sure that you have the background layer selected and not your levels layer or your color balance layer. And then just find a spot that is supposed to be white that you know is white and check the color and see what's going on. So as you can see here, all of these whites are still super, super blue. And that I can take back, have that help me adjust the color balance, make it a little bit more yellow and hopefully fix that. This trick also leads me to my next tip, which is something called selective color. So that's right here. And what selective color does is it allows you to change just one color at a time. And I do this for whites. So select white, and then you can do a number of things. You can change the color of just the whites of the image, and you can also basically brighten the whites by decreasing the amount of blacks in the white. By brightening the white layer, you're obviously decreasing the amount of color in it, and so that in itself fixes the white balance a little bit. But I'm also, because I'm targeting how blue this looks right here, I'm gonna go to cyan and just slightly desaturate that. And as you can see, if you overdo it, then it puts other strange colors in your white balance. But if you do it just a little bit, it actually tends to look pretty dang good. I think this looks like it's starting to get blown out here, so I'm gonna actually not brighten it so much. All right, so let's see how that looks. There's applied and there's off. So especially look here, applied and off. You can see it totally removed that blue shadow from the side of this dish, which is great. The last tool that I use to globally adjust the white balance on my photo is the vibrance feature. And this helps me figure out also just the same way that the eyedropper tool works, exactly what color these whites are that are off balance. By increasing the vibrance, it gives me a lot of information on what the colors of the whites are that need to be fixed. So as you can see here, especially in these areas that are a little bit underexposed, it's still super blue. <laughs> despite all the 
despite all the work that I've done. So I'm gonna just delete that. But I think if I continue to apply a global edit to the entire photo, it's going to affect the white balance of the salad. And I actually think the white balance looks pretty good. It's really just these underexposed areas that don't look quite as good. The easiest way to do this and the way that I love to do it is to go into the camera raw filter and use an adjustment brush, just like we did with that last photo. Brighten it up a little bit, a little warmer, decrease the saturation, and sort of brush that over the background areas that need a little bit of help. And the same thing up here and right here. As you can see though, I desaturated that glass, which I don't wanna do, so I'm gonna just brush that back in. And another pass at this one, because this is really a trouble spot here. And there you go. Super easy, super amazing fix. Look at that before and after. Let's say you don't wanna do that though, and you wanna focus on making these corrections right within Photoshop. I'm gonna undo that so that we have this blue trouble spot back again. We're gonna fix it using layer masks. I'm gonna apply a new curves layer, and as you can see, when you apply it this way, it's already a layer mask. And then I'm gonna remove the mask effect from everything except for this front blue part of the background. How I did this is make sure that you have the black color selected. You wanna be able to toggle between white and black. Black basically masks out the effect and white paints it back in. This is just a quick overview of using masks in Photoshop. There are hundreds of videos out there that will go into more detail about this if this is something new for you. If you see over here on the little map, the only effect that I have is the white spot, which is this blue area. I'm gonna adjust the curves of that area Let's go here. And as you can see, when I do this, it's only adjusting that bottom blue area. And you can do the same thing with the vibrance and saturation layer. So it already has the layer mask. I'm gonna just remove the mask from all the parts of the image except for this front bluish trouble spot. Go back to the mask. And then I'm gonna just desaturate it a little bit. Not too much though. So as you can see, that looks much better. The only thing is it's desaturating the end of the silverware. So then I need to click the mask again, toggle so that the black hide mask effect is selected, and then just paint out that silver. There you go. So now that that's all set, I can finish editing my image and it looks pretty good. As you can see though, I really think that the camera raw filter is the way to go. I think working with layer masks work, but it just takes a little bit longer. So it's really, you know, your workflow and how you develop your personal style that's gonna, you know, kind of help you figure out which one works for you. So just for fun, why don't we open up the original image and, and it's a huge difference, isn't it? And that's it. I know that was a ton of information about Photoshop, but I really encourage you to bookmark this video and come back to it and refer to it when you have your own photo that you're struggling with so you can try these white balance techniques for yourself. I'd love to know in the comments below if there's a technique that you're planning to try first or if you have another way that you adjust the white balance that I can try to incorporate into my editing workflow. If you liked this video and found it helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and of course hit that subscribe button so we can keep in touch. And if you want to see what I'm up to on a day-to-day -day basis, you can find me on Instagram at Aside of Sweet. Thanks so much for watching and for all your support. I will see you in my next video.